All right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to X Plane 11 in Flight Factor Boeing 757. Uh, my name is Captain Chemtrails, and I'm here today to do this quick video on the sequence of events on the takeoff roll on this aircraft. Um, quick background on myself: I do fly this airplane in real life, along with the 767 and the 757 300. And I was asked recently on Facebook to do a video uh, on uh, how to properly take this aircraft off. Now, quick disclaimer, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Uh, the way I do it is the way I've been taught for my particular company, so there might be different ways to do this, but I uh, just want to kind of give that disclaimer out there. But without further ado, just want to give a quick setup here. We're uh, holding short 26 right in Ontario. Uh, the weather is VFR. I didn't put any crazy winds or anything like that. I just want to do a normal takeoff to kind of show uh, what the sequence of events are. A couple things I did in the FMS. It's all set up. Um, v speeds I pulled off the top cat uh, with the flaps 5. The D rates are kind of weird, but I did it basically to get a, a about a approximate EPR setting that I know we normally use around 1.35 to 1.4 depending anyways um, so that's all set um, I threw in a departure it's an RNAV departure it's the uh, Sunshine 4 off of uh, 26 right and uh, we're going up to 14,000 I just put that altitude in there and just made it up um, it's I think it's one of the first above altitudes or maybe it's yeah it's right there I just kind of um, the top altitude on the uh, departure is uh, flight level 230 but I just put 14,000 because we're just going to do this quick video uh, another couple things that uh, set it up uh, what we do in the real aircraft um, prior to us leaving um, starting with the altimeter you notice I bugged the uh, altimeter approximately uh, the field elevation uh, 29830 is the barometric currently Field elevation is, I believe, like 950-ish, 960. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But uh, so it's bugged there, and I do that for a reason um, because in this aircraft, um, uh, in a segmented climb, at a thousand feet, we start our flap or acceleration height uh, on our in a normal procedure. They call it NADP2. But I, I don't want to get too much into that. But anyway, we put that there to kind of designate that's a thousand feet above field elevation. Uh, why don't we use a rail altimeter? Well, you could take off, you can go into a valley, and then this could be off. So this is kind of a thing to help us out. Um, another thing that we do in the real aircraft, other than bugging our speeds, um, is setting our our clean speeds. Um, and particularly, we have two bugs, and we, what we do is, if you don't know this already. Um, we set a flaps 5 clean speed and a flaps up clean speed and in between the two would be flaps 1 and that corresponds with our our uh, flaps 5 and flaps 1 and flaps up normally on this aircraft we always take off with a minimum of flaps 5 now I think in the past flaps 1 was authorized because you won't get the takeoff config with the flaps 1 but I know particularly in at least for our company it's uh, prohibited taking off flaps 1 um, we do see flaps 15 and sometimes flaps 20. And if that's the case, we would take off um, and then go right to flaps 5, and then flaps 1, flaps up. Um, anyways, so yeah. So the, and the way I did this on Flight Factor, since you can't really physically move those two bugs, is what I do is I go in, I pull up the FMS, and then I go into the approach. And when I hit the approach and I double click this and I put a, a speed for the flaps, then those bugs get set appro uh, appropriately. So that's kind of like my trick. But in the real airplane, we slide these bugs over. But anyway, so yeah, um, let's get started. I don't want to waste too much recording. I know you guys want a quick video on how this goes. So I'll try my best to talk my way through here. And if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments. So uh, we're not online or anything like that. We're completely offline. Um, release the parking brake. We'll just say we got told to take off uh, RNAV to whatever dink it is. Okay, we got one hold down at 8,000. I don't think it's going to be a factor today, but we'll see. Keep that in mind. And as long as we're taking off in VNAV, that should 
the flight director should correspond with that if we get close to bumping into that, but something to keep an eye on. So let's put our lights on. We just got clear for takeoff. Let's start our timer. Come on. Oh, I got my stopwatch going still. There we go. Clock's running. Lights are on. R and to ding. Clear to takeoff. Two six right. And so, as soon as we get lined up, obviously you verify the uh, heading of the runway, or should I say the course of the runway, to our uh, indicated course on our nav display. And as that matches up, we know we're on the right runway, because that's a big deal in the real world. We apply symmetrically about 1.1 EPR right here indicated on the engine gauges. We watch for the engines to spool up symmetrically. Once they're spooled up, the other, uh, pilot flying calls to pilot monitoring. Uh, it says N1 or EPR, depending on which model you're in. This airplane just says thrust on it, but uh, that's what it is. They got EPR, and we're moving down the runway. For slight forward pressure on the uh, yoke to keep that directional authority. 80 knots, throttle hold, thrust is normal, is the call out. Um, we're looking. Looking at the engine indications, we know that we can abort before V1. And as we approach V1, pilot monitor would call V1, rotate. Pilot flying would rotate the aircraft about 2 degrees a second, up to 15 degrees. You normally hear a click when you leave, that's the uh, auto brakes clicking off, 15 degrees. Pause the brake, gear up. And you'd hold 15 degrees, and then now you can use the flight director guidance. And we're coming up to our thousand as we're watching that altitude indicator. Pilot flying would call the pilot monitoring to hit climb. So he would say climb power, and the engines would go to climb power. And I'm doing my best to use the mouse and fly with my left hand with the joystick. And now we're already at flaps five clean, so we can go to flaps one. Flaps one clean speed, which is indicated between the two bugs. So we can go to flaps up, and the pilot flying would say flaps up after takeoff checklist, and that would cue the pilot monitoring to go into the after takeoff flow. So pilot flying, he's just making sure he's on the flight director, pitching. In this case, we are uh, pitching forward to uh, about 240 knots keeps the flaps from uh, overspeeding. There's the turn. And yeah, so that's that's really it. That's the takeoff sequence of events. Um, the biggest thing is is that uh, airspeed and looking at the altimeter and making sure. Um, and a couple little differences like from the 737, which I did used to fly as well in real life, is uh, we would have the VNAV armed on this airplane and we would um, we would physically hit the climb power on that uh, thrust panel, TPR panel. But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to leave them at below. And, uh, that's all I really have for this segment. I'm just trying to keep it short. Maybe I'll do some future ones if you guys like this. And uh, take care.